Hello, it's good to have you stopping by. I am all programmed and ready to deliver. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, so I can do whatever I want. And this is Tuesday, February 7th. Now, what we're going to do as we do in all of our shows. We're going to focus in on OTC and penny stocks. Not just any old stocks. We are on a hunt aren't we? We're looking for stocks that have potential to make us some money. So this pretty much negates looking at rocket stocks from today that had huge gains. They've already blown their potential. We're primarily going to be looking at stocks that you would consider under the radar, stocks that have not run yet. So we've got to do a little more due diligence and we've got to have a little more faith. Now, you need to keep this in mind as well. The stocks that I'm showing you are primarily for swing trades. I'm thinking you're going to have to hold these for three to 10 days. That's what I'm thinking most of these will be. So if you're looking for day trades, these may not fit what you're considering. However, I am looking for stocks that have warm charts, that have lingering news or a filing maybe out a month or two months ago that projected something to occur that hasn't yet happened so that we can get ready for those. So sometimes there is a little bit of wait. And in that wait period, you can build your position, folks. If you're going to be holding the stock for a while, you're not in it for a day trade, get in the habit of not buying everything at one time. You see a good price, buy maybe 25% of what you want at that price. Because in a 10-day period, anything can happen. Chances are there will be a dip. And if it's a nice dip, a nice dip, right? You don't normally get to say that. But if you're waiting to buy at a better price, a dip comes along, you don't feel frustrated that you're losing money. You feel excited because you get to buy another 25% at a better price and bring your average down. So when that imminent jump occurs, you've got a better price. Now we do trade penny stocks and they're on every exchange, the OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. So don't be surprised if we're looking at major exchange stocks, but they'll all be under five bucks. Now we do do a lot of trading on the OTC because there's a lot of opportunities down there. All that news right there, that comes from the OTC market. That's my personal research. I read all of that. No boring news in there, real interesting stuff. So if you're looking for catalytic news, that's the sort of news you'll get. There's about eight days worth in there. Oldest is at the top, newest is down at the bottom. And this is where I got it from, the otcmarkets.com website. I love this site because it's updated every single day through the day by FINRA and the SEC. So if you're doing any research on OTC stocks, this is where you should be starting. This information is all current. You don't have to sort through old information to find what's updated. This is the perfect site for doing research. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Uh, some strange numbers up there. Let's see if anything happens when we refresh it. No. All right, what we've got here is a low dollar volume, really low, $1.3 billion. Our trades are low, 244,000. We're normally between 250 and 300. So we're not too much lower, but it's definitely lower. But what is above average right now is our share volume at 8.4 billion. Just a few days ago, we were at 4 billion. Well, with a low dollar volume and low trade volume, but high share volume, this tells me that a lot of cheap stocks were being bought today. They were getting a lot of shares for little money. So there wasn't a whole lot of activity on the market today. It was slow. And the activity that was there was for the cheaper stocks. All right, I've got some interesting stocks I want to share with you today. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And would you believe no warrants today? It happens. Well, let's not dilly-dally. Let's jump on into this. First ticker we're looking at is CPTN, Septon Inc. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. And I'm going to tell you right now, this stock does not fit the criteria of lingering news. No, it doesn't. Not by any means. I went and looked, found a hot chart for this company. She looks like she's just about ready to break out. And that after months of being beat down. So there's some good gains sitting on the table. Well, when I came looking for lingering news, all I found was hot current news. There's filings, there's news presses. The last 30 days, they've just brought out a bunch of it about deals and money. And I think there's enough hot news there to get that chart burning. So that's why we're looking at CPTN, even though she hasn't got any lingering news. CPTN finished today at $1.35 with just a little over 7% gains. 
Now, we're not going to take a look at it, and I have not looked at it, but she does have a warrant ticker CPTNW. I tell you this because when a stock starts to run and run fast, the warrant normally does too. Yeah, right. Normally the warrant goes farther and faster than the stock does. So I'm just letting you know in case this stock starts to take off hot and furious, you may want to consider the warrant. It may be doing more. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us in their news press that Septon is a Silicon Valley innovator of LiDAR-based solutions for cars, smart cities, smart spaces, and smart industrial applications. With its patented LiDAR technology, Septon aims to take LiDAR mainstream and achieve a balanced approach to performance, cost, and reliability while enabling scalable and intelligent 3D perception solutions across industries, more than one industry. See, LiDAR is that device, you just saw a picture of it there, it's a small device that goes into your car that allows it to see. This gives it the availability to drive itself. Well, there are more applications for LiDAR than just putting it in a car. As you're gonna see when I share some news with you, and that's what this company's doing. They're doing more than just the automotive sector. They've got other ideas for LiDAR. So what was the relative volume around this company today? She had a nice jump. Went from 172,000 to almost a million shares. So she's starting to get some attention. This is definitely under the radar at 172,000. A million is not under the radar. That's getting on the radar. Share structure. They didn't give us any information over here except the outstanding, which is at 156 million. So I went and did a Google search. Best you can do with the Google search because there's going to be a lot of different numbers. These sites don't all update. So I look for the same number repeated often. That's the best I can do. And I tried my best here, but none of these numbers match, as you can see. But they're close. So we're going to go from 41 to 43 million. Somewhere in there is our float, so we presume. Financials for Septon. Annually, they got nothing. Nothing coming in for four years. Quarterly, well, they've changed their game, haven't they? Completely. They went from zip to millions. Now, we know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. So, the first quarter, they were at 1.4. Second quarter, 2.5. Third quarter, 1.8. That's giving them three, five, six, about six, six and a half million dollars from nothing. And we've still got one more quarter to add on here. So, whatever they're doing now, it's making them some good, strong revenues. Disclosures. All right, they do have some disclosures here. We had two 13Gs come out. A 13G shows new ownership. When somebody comes in and buys a ton of shares, they get ownership when they buy so much. And this person, this is, uh, where's the name? Not that it really matters. There it is. LDV Partners Fund got an aggregate of 16.1 million shares and they are now let's see if i can find it 10 percent owners in the company so they put a lot of money into this company and now they have voting rights so they can actually steer this company we not only have one but we have two of those that just came in here a couple days ago now let's go take a look at that news this goes back to December 20th, and I've got a few pieces here highlighted because some of them are repeated. Septon unveils world's slimmest software-definable top-end LiDAR, the Vista X120+. Plus. That was at the beginning of January. Third week of January, Septon announces closing of $100 million investment from Koito Manufacturing. That's a lot of money in their pocket. And then we had news that came out just two days ago. Septon secures multi-million dollar LiDAR contract from leading U.S. highway tolling system operator. Let's take a look at that news. So they tell us here that Septon Inc., a leader in high-performance LiDAR solutions for the automotive and smart infrastructure markets, announced today that it has won a multi-million dollar sales contract from one of the largest highway tolling system operators in the U.S. Under the terms of the large-scale contract, Septon's Sora Series LiDAR sensors will de be deployed in the U.S., by the customer on several major tollways located in the tri-state area and Northern California. This partnership is expected to be the largest commercial LiDAR deployment in the tolling sector to date, with potential to scale outside of the U.S. for future projects. 
Septin Sora LiDARs feature industry-leading scanning speed and data rate, enabling very detailed and accurate 3D profiling of vehicles passing at highway speeds. They have been used to modernize tolling infrastructure worldwide by facilitating free flow electronic toll collection, significantly reducing traffic congestion and toll leakage. Now, from what I'm gathering here, they've got two different uses. They're using it as radar, to detect your speed. They've got them on the highways and as you pass, they can monitor your speed, they can take pictures of your car, they can read your license plate, all that good stuff, which is what they do in the UK. They don't have traffic police. They just have cameras and send you a ticket because they seen what you did and they caught it on camera. The other idea they're using here is for toll booths. So you don't have to stop and pay anybody. You can just drive right through it, get your number for you know your account. It knows who you are, gets all that information just driving right on through. And they just got the biggest to date contract for that sector. So they are making money. They're making more money. That contract just came in, right? We were looking at revenues that have been coming in all year and this multi-million dollar contract just came in a couple days ago you think it's enough maybe to get the charts burning i think so let me show you what we got to work with taking a look at ticker cptn this is a six month four hour chart and we're going to be doing all of our charting on my free trading platform it's the only one i got this is think or swim i got it when i signed up with td ameritrade so can you so the six month, four hour chart, we've got a low bubble way over here on this side of the chart at 89 cents and she has never looked back at it. She then crossed the 200 here and we started looking at it when she was showing some power. This was at the end of September and we looked at it at the beginning of October, it looks like. And this was her heyday. This is when she hit a high of $2.88 and then fell away from that very quickly all the way down here and hasn't done a whole lot until the 200 day SMA has gotten close. Now let us zoom in on the channel there that's so small you can't see anything. All right, there's our channel. The channel was underneath the 50 day SMA. Well, you see it is on an incline. It's been pushing up. So it actually crossed that 50 day SMA when our price got strength and is now pushed outside of the channel, has broken through the 200 day SMA mightily. She has fallen back, but it looks like she is sitting right there on top of our channel, right up underneath the 200 day SMA. Keeping in mind that that 200 day SMA is coming down closer and closer to the price. So sooner or later, I think it's pretty imminent that that price is gonna bounce right off of that channel up on top of that 200 day SMA and start to climb. Our technicals, our PPO is looking good. She's been climbing for about a week. Our MACD, pretty lackadaisical. She's kind of gone flat here over this period. And our RSI is pulling back right now because of the aftermarket activity right there. And let's not overlook the volume. These last two days of volume are supreme compared to any of this volume back here. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, she's in that channel. She had a breakout here. She's tried to break out a couple times, but right now is the most serious one. There's no doubt about that. She jumped here from $1.31 to $1.75 just to show off. And then she came all the way back down, bounced on the middle line, this is a regression channel. This is a 50% mark right in there. So you know when it's weak or strong. And it got very strong here, has come back, bounced off of that 50, bounced off of it again, and is now sitting on the 50-day SMA rather than that 50% mark of our channel. She's pushing up. I'm expecting her to get on top of this channel right here. Technicals. They are all cooling off right now. This aftermarket activity has taken effect. Prior to that, it all still looks strong. Five day, five minute. So there's our channel getting tighter and tighter. She's broke out of it here with that mighty jump, came down to the 50% mark, had another jump out of it, sitting on top of it, right? She's getting comfortable up here took a jump up and now she's landed on it. Looks to me like she's practicing. She's practicing for a nice jump up. Our technicals, they're not showing anything like that. They show she's gonna come back down and she very well could come right back down to this 50% mark. I wouldn't expect her to come down any lower, 
I wouldn't. I would expect that to be the floor. This might be a good entry point, $1.26. She could bounce where she's at there, but I would look to see her come down to $1.26 and then start to push off. Remember, the company's been making money. They've still got another quarter to go, and they've got things going on right now. New deals that just came out a couple days ago, multi-million dollar deals on top of the revenues they're making. So their news is coming out regularly. They've got new investors that have just come in. I expect the price to start moving. What do you think? Now a good time to consider it? Now this stock definitely fits the criteria of lingering news. This is ticker RAKR, Rainmaker Worldwide. Hasn't had any news or filings for months. However, the last two news presses, one that came out in August and one that came out in October, have the lingering news I believe can get the charts moving. So Raker finished the day at just a little over three tenths of a penny, 0.003325, with almost 1% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. This is called the QB. That B literally stands for better. What makes this tier better is that the companies have to audit their financials. That's good for us. That makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. Speaking of trustworthy, they've got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Transfer agent verified and a verified profile. Lots of important information is being represented by these green ticks that's validated behind the scenes. And when you're trading OTC stocks, validated information is precious, very precious. And they've got independent directors. Now, I don't know a whole lot of purpose for independent directors, except you must have them if you're going to uplist. Now, they may have already used their independent directors to come from the pink to the QB. I don't know. I didn't do any research. But they may be interested in uplisting to the NASDAQ. I don't know. But if they are, they're going to need independent directors. So they are sitting pretty in that regard. So let's look at what Rainmaker is all about. Rainmaker Worldwide is a global leader in the water technology sector. Our technology is delivered to our clients either through a water as a service model or directly delivering our products to the clients or distributors. Rainmaker deploys two types of energy efficient fresh water producing technologies to communities and corporations who need it most. The first one is air to water, which actually harvests fresh water from humidity and heat in the air, in the atmosphere. And the second one is water to water, which transforms seawater or polluted water into drinking water or commercial grade input water. Our technology is powered by wind, solar, electric grid, or diesel, or a combination where possible. It is deployable anywhere and leaves no carbon traces when using renewable energy. So that's what they are all about. So what is their relative volume considering they don't have any fresh catalysts? Well, it jumped and jumped nicely from 1.1 million to 4.5 million. Now, I'm not going to say that was under the radar. But I am going to say that is definitely on the radar now. Share structure for Raker. Oh yeah, had to go look this one up. We've just got too many different numbers here. Have no clue which one it is. And because this is a QB and not a pink, I couldn't go to the disclosure to find the float. So I had to go do another Google search. God, I hate doing Google searches for floats. Best I could come up with, it looks like it's about 142 million. Best guess. Financials for the company. Well, this is where Raker drops the ball. They've got nothing coming in annually and they've got nothing coming in quarterly. Now, normally this would be a concern. Now it's the catalyst. That lingering news I'm talking about, it came out in August and October. You're looking at four, five, six months ago that they made this deal with another water company, as I'm going to share with you here in just a second. Well, they should be making some money here real soon. It's been a while, so I'm expecting a filing or a news press. That's just my presumption, but I think enough time has gone by for something to be happening. And their disclosures. Well, as I told you, they haven't had any new disclosures or filings for a couple months. Their last disclosure was a quarterly report that came out for September, and that came out in November. Looking at their news. All right, this news goes all the way back to uh, February of last year. Ooh, that's a year's worth of news right there. And most of this news is about them uplisting to the QB, which answers my question about the independent directors. They use them to uplist from the pink to the QB. So I doubt they have any intentions right at this point to uplist to the NASDAQ.
Then we've got the two current pieces of news, one from August and one from October. Let's take a look at those. The first one here came out in August. Rainmaker has signed a joint development agreement with Miranda Water Treatment Systems, MWTS, whose primary operations reside in Turkey. Both firms share a common vision of making safe drinking water available to the world. This is just the beginning of what we believe will be a fruitful long-term and strategic relationship, says the CEO of Raker. The depth of MWTS's technical and manufacturing experience is wide-reaching and will be extraordinarily beneficial to Raker. Likewise, Raker's proprietary technology is ideal to complete our strategy of providing an end-to-end -end solution for our global customers. Now looking at that other piece of news, this one came out in October. Rainmaker Worldwide and Miranda Water Treatment Systems have signed a memorandum of understanding to formalize the integration of the two firms at both a strategic and operating levels. Miranda already has installations in more than 35 countries and Raker will expand this reach with its global scope and synergy with its portfolio of water products. Both companies are in the midst of defining a definitive agreement and finalizing with mutual due diligence being handled. So what we're saying here is the deal's not done. They started the deal back in uh, August. They're talking about it in October. We should at least see a piece of news come out saying that they've signed the deal, that they've closed the deal. And that could definitely get this stock running. All right, let's go take a look at this chart. I know it doesn't look too hot, but she does have a little bit of sparkle to her. This is ticker RAKR, six month, four hour chart. We've got a high bubble almost six months ago of five and a half cents, and we came all the way down here to a low in December of double zero two. And right now we're just a smidge above that at double zero three three. Once she hit that high, she started falling hard and fast, crushed her 200, came under the 50 day, and has just been pushing down, down, down until she hit this low bubble. And here is where change is starting to come in. She did push off of that low bubble to get on top of the 50. Now, what really caught my attention to this chart was all that volume right there. You look at this compared to the big picture. There just isn't any volume compared to this. It's very, very strong. Now, admittedly, most of the volume has been for selling, but look at the buy volume. It's even stronger than the sell volume. So she's come down here, obviously, to a buy point, and people are starting to come in now. It is still under the nine-day SMA. That is seriously under the radar. Now, our technicals, they do show some strength. We've got a crossover on the MACD right now pushing up. Our RSI is very weak, very weak at 36. But what catches my eye is my PPO, the percentage price oscillator, and the ADX. Now, my ADX shows me trend continuation. When this is going in a straight line, whatever the trend is, it's going to continue as long as this line doesn't change. You see here, you see how she changed directions right here. Go straight up. That's where she started to fall. So it didn't matter if this was going up or down. Just that the line was going straight. As soon as the line changed direction, the trend changed direction. So right now, we have got the blue going up and the red going down like that. That is a guaranteed growth on the chart. So right now, the charts have a lot of strength. 20-day, one-hour view. Woohoo! that was a big fall. She fell from 008 up here on top of the 200, crushed the 200, falling down to that low, and is just now working her way back up. She's crossed over the 20-day SMA and is right up underneath that 50-day SMA on top of her nine. So things are looking good. And look, we've still got that spread, that bobby pin being opened up. We've still got that showing that the trend is growing. Our MACD has been growing for about two days, pushing up, just about ready to cross the signal line. RSI is still pretty weak. It is at 49. Five day, five minute view. Okay, she was looking bad, right? She was falling, 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 hit this low bubble, crossed up over that 50 day SMA. Look at that bar. Look at how tiny these little teeth are here. And then all of a sudden a fang came out once she got on top of that 50 day SMA. She's been riding this 50 day SMA, getting her footing, and now she's starting to take off. She is pulling back a little bit here, but she's on top of the 50. And our technicals still look like they have strength. There is some pullback on the RSI, as there is with all of the time frames, and our MACD right now. 
But I am thinking between these two companies and the five, six months that have passed, we're overdue for a filing or a news press. And when they come out, this thing could jump nicely. Considering they're not making any revenues, as soon as they say they're making revenues, that's going to change the ball game. So this could be at a very opportune price right now at double zero three. But of course, do some more due diligence, folks. We only covered about that much of it. Now this last stock, I feel I already know this stock. I feel I have a relationship with it, but I don't. This is sticker XELA, Exela Technologies. Oh, I know how I know this stock. <laughs> Every morning when I get up pre-market, I turn on my favorite penny stock scan, double zero one to three dollars, looking for hot penny stocks and hot warrants. Now, in the morning pre-market, you're not seeing percentage gains up at the top. You're normally seeing volume. And every day, virtually every day, XELA is at the top of my list, selling more shares than most companies on the OTC market in that price range. Now, I'm not saying she's taking gains every single day, but she's selling a lot of shares. She's got liquidity. She's got a lot of people trading her stock, and that's always a good thing. Now, they've just had some recent good news, and they've got some bad news as well. And believe it or not, both can cause enough tension to cause this stock to pop. And with that sort of volume, it could be a real good game. So ticker XELA finished today at seven cents with just a little over 6% gains. So let's take a look at what this company does. Alexa Technologies is a business process automation leader. In other words, they've got computer programs that do bookkeeping bookkeeping for all sorts of industries. With decades of experience operating mission critical processes, Alexa serves a growing roster of more than 4,000 customers throughout 50 countries, including over 60% of the Fortune 100 companies. Over 60% of the Fortune 100 companies, that's bragging, that's good. Alexa's software and services include multi-industry departmental solution suites addressing finance and accounting, human capital management and legal management, as well as the industry-specific solutions for banking, healthcare, insurance, and the public sector. Through cloud-enabled platforms, we're seeing a lot of businesses working through the cloud now, built on a configurable stack of automation modules, and they have approximately 16,500 employees and they operate in 21 countries. So they basically do all of the bookkeeping automated for all sorts of sectors. That's what they do. And business obviously is good. So what was the relative volume around this company today? See, I told you they do a lot of shares. On an average, she's doing 153 million shares a day. Today was a strong day. Today she did just shy of a quarter billion shares at 221 million. Share structure for Alexa. Did I look this one up? Uh, I can't remember if I did. It would be right here if I did. Nope, I didn't. All right, I'm going to have to go look this one up, folks. I thought I had looked up Alexa's share count. We have 122 million outstanding. I'm going to go look to float up, and I will put it right up there. If I don't find any float, it's possible. I'll put three question marks so you know I didn't forget about you. It, it can happen. Finances for Alexa. I'm kind of interested in this. What have we got going on? Woo! <laughs> this company's making money. At the end of 2021, they had $1.1 billion. We know that's billions, right? We got to put three zeros behind there. That's a billion. What about quarterly? Well, they're making over a quarter million, almost 300 million every single quarter. So they're raking in the cash, no problem. But boy, did they pay for it. Look at the cost of revenue here. They only get to keep 46 million out of 264 million. My God, that's a lot of expense. But they are pulling in some strong revenues regularly. Disclosures. Yes, we do have two 8Ks that came out here currently the last 30 days. I've looked at both of these and neither one of them are good news. One is them missing an interest payment and the other one is them being contacted by NASDAQ that they're not meeting the minimum bid price requirement. They've been under a dollar for too long. They've been given six months to get their price up over a dollar for 10 days straight. If they do that, they're out of hot water. Well, they haven't done it yet and their deadline is April 10th. 
What is their current price right now? Oh, seven cents. They got a long ways to go. Now I did hear, I read that they have a meeting with the SEC with regards to this. Now I don't know what's going to come of that. All companies have that option, but most don't take it. This one did. All right. What about their news? What do we got going on over there? Well, there's not a lot here. They're talking about their financial results and that missed interest payment. And then we had a piece of news here at the end of December. Jumping on into that, that is right here. December 23rd, the company, a leading provider of business process automation solutions, today announced it has been recognized as a major player in the IDC marketscape for the United States RCM Service Solutions Vendor Assessment. They're getting their name put on a vendors list so all these other companies can use them. Revenue Cycle Management, the RCM service, is the process by which a health system bills for services and generates revenue. RCM typically covers the entire patient journey from a patient's first appointment all the way through to the payer's acceptance of the final payment. Everything that doctors and hospitals do, you got to pay for. That Q-tip they used, you got to pay for. Well, there's a code that goes with that Q-tip. And if that code doesn't get entered properly, somebody makes a mistake or they forget, the hospital's not being paid. So they've got a service here that does all of that properly. And it's helping these hospitals keep the money that they're making. Then I found another piece of news that came out here January 10th, and we're not going to go into this, but they tell us here that the company signed a strategic partnership with Quintess Global. Now, Quintess Global isn't using their services. They're helping them expand their services farther out. So they're making more deals. They're being recognized for what they do. You see them making a lot of money, and they got a little bit of hot water right now with the NASDAQ. Let's go take a look at that chart. I know, pretty disparaging chart at first glance. This is XELA, six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here in May of $6 and at the end of January, we were at five and a half cents and she has been falling hard all of this time without any volume. You don't see any volume back here and then all of a sudden you've got a ton of volume. Look at all that volume that's coming in right now. It is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And there's the channel that the price is sitting in. The channel is going downhill, but the price is working away uphill through that channel. From the lower half, crossing up into the upper half, wrestling with our 50-day SMA here and getting a perfect placement. We're on the top half of that channel, on top of our nine, on top of the 50, right up underneath that 200 and the top of the channel. This could bounce out very easily, folks. Now, it may take a couple of days. It could do it in a hurry, but it could take a couple of days. But when it does it, it could run real hard and real fast. Our technicals, our PPO has just had a crossover about a day ago. It is pushing up and looking good. MACD's had a crossover a few days ago, just now crossed the signal line. RSI is up at 60. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Let's squeeze that up a little bit. All right. We had a high here of 11 cents. She was riding that 200-day SMA for many days. And then she fell down to this low bubble, has been crawling across here, waiting for the 200-day SMA to get close. And right now, she is just wrestling with the 200, flat. I mean, not a whole lot going on. That's called consolidation. You normally see consolidation. Now, all the price bars get flatter and flatter, and then they go real still, and then pop, something happens. Something's building up here. Technicals, we still got our PPO on the top, so it's pretty much planed out. Our MACD is actually at a crossover and is pulled underneath, and our RSI is at 54 and pushing down right now. Five day, five minute. Last couple of days, she's been growing. She was following that 200-day SMA with a lot of ups and downs in here, folks. Broke away from the 200 with the rip, came down hard onto the 200, and now she's just glued to it. I mean, just stuck to that 200. She doesn't want to go anywhere. Look at this, folks. Lots of trades going on right now. She is building up tension. She's building up tension with all the money she's making, all the deals she's involved with, uh, being recognized for what they do, and being kicked off of the NASDAQ. Good versus 
bad. I'm not sure which is going to win, but this is the strange part. If they don't cut the mustard by April 23rd, whatever that date was that they got to get their price up over a dollar, they'll be removed from the NASDAQ and it will be announced. Well, when it's announced, most of these companies, when they get kicked off the NASDAQ, bounce. You get a big run just before they leave the NASDAQ and then it falls real hard. Comes down to the NASDAQ at a much lower price and then has another bounce off of the floor. Nowhere near where it was when it was on the major exchange, but it is a profit builder if you're down there playing them. So there's a lot of reasons this could run bad and good. XELA, keep your eye on it, but remember, it's not going to be the volume that gives you the telltale sign. It is going to be the percentage gains. Hopefully you're not bothered that we didn't talk about SPACs and warrants today. Just everyday ordinary common stock companies and that's okay. All of these companies we looked at today have got warm charts and they all have catalysts out ahead of them that were waiting to happen. So we're just waiting for news. We're waiting for a filing and once it happens, we expect those charts to move. There's lots of stocks ready to move, folks, and the news isn't the only thing to tell you. Look at those charts. They give away a lot. The more you know, folks, the more you're going to grow. See ya.